fire. is on fire right now. Hey, what's going on? This is IQ for Global Teen Talk TV. This is episode one, and I'm chilling here with the industry's most sought-after producers right now in the game, top of their game. And I'm so blessed to be able to have an exclusive interview for Global Teen Talk TV right now. And to my left is my main man, Oak. Hey, what's going on, Oak? How you doing? And this is my main man, Pop Wanzel. Hey, teens. <laughs> <laughs> and when they collab, they make nothing but hits. Right now, kids all around the world are dancing to their music. Not only kids, adults as well. I want y'all to kind of give people a little overview on some of the records that you guys have collabed on or worked on individually over the past couple of years so we can bring the people up to speed. Oh, uh, over the last couple of years? Well, obviously, the obvious one is Nicki Minaj. Um, yeah. uh, what else have we worked on, man? We did a whole bunch of rock projects. We work on a lot of things. Trey songs. Trey songs uh, featuring Spears. Drake. Unusual. We've done Britney. We've done Nikki, who's a good friend. Um, uh, it's just a lot. Howard Kelly Rowland. Kelly Rowland. Uh, Jeanette Claudette. Fantasia. Um, Mary Digby. Mary Ashley, Ashley Tisdale. Um, it's a lot. Man. It's a lot of things that we've done. It's impossible to remember all of it. Yeah. yeah. So out of all of those records. What was your biggest record to date right now? Your Love. Your Love was our first number one. First number one Your record. Love was our first number one record. Yep. Wow. Absolutely. That is amazing. How did that feel when you, you know, how did it feel to work with a creative genius such as Nicki Minaj and be able to collab with her over the past few years? Because I know you were working with her also in the past as well as you since about, what, 2000? I've known her. I've known, I met her early on on, on MySpace. I met her before everything and before I was really doing anything, before she was doing anything. And we just maintained a, a creative friendship and just a just a friendship in general. And, yeah. And you said, okay. Yeah. How have you taken advantage of the internet to kind of expand your brand and get kind of people to know, you know, about the talent that you possess? Well, I, you know, there's obviously things like Facebook and Twitter and all that other good stuff. And, and I have, personally, I'm a, I'm a person with a weird sensibility. He is too, actually. So it kind of shows in, in, in what what we say online. It kind of makes its way to a lot of people. So I can only imagine if you knew these guys personally as well as I do, you would just know that it's just nothing but creative genius flowing. What are some of you guys' musical influences that made you want to become a musician? You know what? I think we can both answer that question and say that we have family members that inspired us to, to be to to be in music to begin with. Oh, yeah. Like for you, it was your pops, right? My this father man's father is Dexter Wontel. He's a father. genius. <laughs> Tell. I was around it. I was around it. I was around it. Um, from as, for as long as I can remember, I was around people like Phyllis Hyman, mm -hmm. Billy Paul, and Teddy Pendergrass. I got to see these people work on material with my father. Mm. Um, I guess it just kind of rubbed off. Well, being that I have a fondness of your father and nah. you know you know what I mean and I, I feel as though that his some of his records you know have been remade yeah recently yeah a lot of his records uh, you yeah. know a little earlier you can go to Money Power Respect yeah Money Power Respect Oof. and uh, he, yeah Maybach That's Music too. yeah Maybach Music too. Yeah. Maybach Music too. Yeah. Yeah. And, it, it, and, and wait a minute that wasn't a sample that was played in its entirety with something mm. a little drums added to it if I'm correct as far as the Maybach Music 2 record? Um, I, th I think they, they sampled and played on top. Too. Played on top of it, yeah, because when I heard the original record, you know, D played the original record that your father made, and then he played me the, you know, the Maybach Music 2, and it was, you know, pretty streamlined, flowing through. Not they got to sound really clean. Right, not they as choppy as really most. Clean. You know what, though, speaking of, speaking, of, speaking of samples, of people, things that people think are samples, a record that you know, I did recently called Unusual. By, yeah. um, by Trey Songs featuring Drake. Yeah. And a lot of people think that the record is a sample, but it actually isn't. It's, it's an original it's composition that was composed by, by Mr. Wanzel. By my father, yeah. And that we took and used 
and, and made it a part of the original production. Like, a lot of people think it's a sample, and people ask me all the time, yo, what sample is that? And I'm like, it's not a sample. <laughs> he played on it. And they're like, man, get out of here, whatever. Y'all didn't do that, man. What is like, but I think, I, I think the main thing about that, though, is a lot of musicality is left the production process. I think a lot of people rely too much on electronics and, and, and quantizers and arpeggiators, or arpeggiators and things like that that people have kind of forgotten how to put together original sounding material. Now there are, you know, there is an elite list of people who have obviously been good at it for a long time and still are. But, you know, I think we, we represent the, 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 the individuals whose minds are thinking more of a musical, in more of a musical way. And our influences dictate that, I think, like your father. Well, how have your parents, when you both told them, you know, and they're not brothers, even though when I keep saying both and all that stuff, <laughs> and, you know, and I'm just so amazed that they look, they have just so many similarities, yeah, personality man. and look-wise, it's just, it's... We might as well be. Yeah, it's amazing. I, I've, 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 I've come to accept it. <laughs> <laughs> how, how, did, how did your parents react to, first of all, both of you initially saying, hey, I want to get in the music business? I don't know if your parents were in the music business before well, you or because you know it's, it's a little different his parents reaction right. his father's reaction versus, versus somebody me. who hasn't had it, the success right. from the music business that you know well my my dad he's a musician in his own right he's, he can sing and you know he's an amazing vocalist and a great a great songwriter but he you know never really took the music industry seriously you know he's a military dude my mom is um is turkish Born and raised in Turkey. So she she doesn't really even have access to a lot of the things that I've been doing over here. So when I tell her, hey, mom, yeah, I co-produced the Nicki Minaj single. She's like, who's Nicki Minaj? Like, she's Turkish. She she has no idea. Like, she pays no attention. So when, when I told her, when I told her, mom, you know, I'm thinking about, like, leaving the job that I have to do production full time. She's like, what kind of music can you make doing music production? I was like, oh, what kind of money can you make? I was like, well, there's not really a lot of money in the beginning, but if I'm successful, it'll really work out. Her brother's a producer, so she knows how hard it is. So she wasn't happy about it at all. But, you know, a house, a car, and a couple of things later, I'm pretty sure she's pretty ecstatic about me. <laughs> I, think she, <laughs> I think she's into it right now. No question. But, uh, yeah. And your father's response? Or My father, uh, uh, you know what? Surprisingly, it, it wasn't what you would think it wasn't all positive mm -hmm, because mm -hmm. in the process because of all of the mistakes that I was making during the process mm. it, it wasn't a, a good um, response as time went on <laughs> and they realized like hey this is kind of good at what you do <laughs> no question and I think I think that then um, you know I got I had all of their support actually 100% they were ready they, they were good with it are there any particular stories, you know, I have to get too in depth that kind of stand out between the two of you, whether recording with somebody, whether meeting somebody, whether somebody shocked to, you know, knowing who you guys were, or you say, hey, I made this record, and you're like, oh, or anything along those lines? Um, there, there are too many, actually. Yeah. Too, many? too many? Okay, too we don't many. have that much time for too many. <laughs> so, so we're going to minimize this, and I just want to end this on this note. Words of wisdom. Mm. Words of wisdom to the teens out there. Go. Teens um, that obviously want to do music, right? Or, or just, just want to general. Just um, and, you know what? In a nutshell, stay in school. Please finish school. School, 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 school. And I say that because I didn't finish school. Um, I dropped out of high school to pursue music full time. And granted, it worked for me and I was successful, but I got a lot of kids um, that, are, that are still in school that look at my story and say, like, yeah, well, it worked for you, so I'm, I'm going to do the same thing. It, it don't work like that for everybody. It's not for everybody. It's very rare. Um, you know, that's just me. Every, everybody's, you know, story doesn't end the same. So school, education, stay off the streets. There's nothing good in the streets. There's nothing there. There's nothing on the corner. Stay in the house, read. <laughs> <laughs> read. Just just do no but um excel in school and 
your education can take you so many places. You have no idea. I, I, it sucks right now. I know it does. I'm just being real dumb. It sucks. I know it sucks. It sucks. It sucks for everybody. But the payoff mm -hmm. is so sweet. Remember, you got a you got a whole future. A whole future. Life as short as it is is long. Yes. And you gotta you gotta set that up right. Stay in school. My man. My word. My advice to teens, you know, having been one at some point, oh. as long ago as it might have been for me. Uh. <laughs> um, you know, when you're a teenager and you're in high school, you, you believe that certain things that you might want to do are, are hard to do. One thing that I have learned, you know, doing this is that the difference between, the real difference between success and failure is whether or not you stop trying. And that's the only difference. The people who stop fail. The people who keep going succeed eventually, regardless of how long it takes you. So, you know, the mentality you might have in school is, oh man, well it's too hard to do this, or I'm looking at what this person's doing, how can I do that, I can't do that. Screw that, I'm gonna leave this, I'm gonna go to the corner and do what I'm gonna do, no. If you have something that you wanna do, if there's something that makes you happy, then, then, then just try to do it. Continue to try to do it. All right. Hey, what's going on? This is IQ, and I'd like to thank my man Oak and my big brother Pop for coming in, checking in with GlobalTeenTalk.com. This is Global Teen Talk TV, and y'all going to see a lot more of these brothers. Y'all going to hear a lot more of their great music. Go on to YouTube, go on to iTunes, support them. This is real organic. This is not no all that old nonsense that y'all starting to listen to now. This is their <laughs> real music, and they're keeping it authentic, and they're making it from the heart. That's all.